One, two, three. Hello, this is Marina Chang reporting live from Surf Expo 2008 for the KitePorum.com, the Kite Porter Magazine, and ASUs.net. We're here at the HQ Power Kites booth at Surf Expo talking to Tim Baxmeyer. Uh, Tim, can you tell us a little bit about the company and your role with HQ? Absolutely. Well, my name is Tim Baxmeyer with HQ Power Kites. Um, HQ is a, uh, a German-based company, a manufacturer for all sorts of power kites. And uh, uh, I'm uh, running the U.S. division uh, out of Chesapeake, Virginia, and I'm the president there. So, Tim, HQ Power Kites is featuring uh, two traction kites here at the show this year. Can you tell us, um, starting out with the Hydra, a little bit about what this kite is all about? Uh, absolutely. Well, the Hydra is uh, the world's uh, first and only uh, water belongable trainer. Uh, basically, look at a, a closed cell foil trainer kite. Uh, it's got two openings on each on one side. Uh, which basically where the wind flows in and uh, a little funnel is inside. So whenever the internal pressure is reached, uh, those actually close up and the kite stays inflated. It's a, it's a three-line design, so the kite can be launched and relaunched uh, in any situation. It's a very safe kite. Uh, and as I said, it relaunches from the water, so uh, no longer are people actually have to land uh, or learn actually kiteboarding uh, on land. Now we can actually go in the water and uh, teach and, and train right there. And what sizes does this kite come in? Uh, it comes in 3 meters, which is this one here, this plate, and also uh, 3.5 meters. What is the wind range of traction kites? We, we don't see, you know, a lot of them. The industry is obviously dominated by the leading edge um, inflatable type of kites. So, so tell us a little bit more and educate us a little bit more about this particular kite. Well, this, the one good thing about the trainer uh, in this case is uh, this 3 meter trainer actually starts flying uh, like in six mile an hour, so in six miles you can get the kite up in the air and start practicing your skills actually uh, on the water and you can also relaunch on the water in that little wind. So uh, all the bigger, the tube kites, whatever, they won't even fly in that kind of wind. So now with this uh, foil kite you can actually do all those sorts of things. So the kite is a three-lined uh, fixed kite. Do we have a bar that, we, yes, we do have a bar that we can go over later. Okay, we, we will get to that um, after we uh, do the next kite, okay? So is there anything else you wanted to add about the Hydra? Have we basically covered it? Uh, absolutely. Uh, the, the Hydra does come with like an internal drainage system, uh, which means that whenever water comes inside the kite, it actually floats down to the bottom of the kite, to the trailing edge and then floats to either side of the kite. And I can show real quick, there's a dirt out on here's the end. So here you can open the kite. So now, if, if there is water in the kite, you basically open the, uh, the leading of uh, the treading edge here, and, and now all the water actually comes off the kite, and debris as well, if, if debris would be in there. So that's one uh, you know, nice feature about the kite. Uh, other than that, it's a, it's a sewn bridle, it's uh, heavy duty made and um, very uh, sturdy, uh, high quality design actually. So Tim, being that the, uh, that the Hydra is a fixed, uh, fixed kite, can you explain a little bit about how the bar works for this particular um, kite? Yeah, absolutely. As I said earlier, it's a three line design. So you got your two power lines connected to the outside leader lines and then the third line uh, attaches to the center. Um, the safety system works like this. I got the wrist lease uh, attached to my wrist. And now, in case of an emergency or an, I need to land the kite, I just let go the bar, and the bar travels up the center line and only pulls on the trailing edge of the kite. So that means the kite actually immediately comes down and uh, lands in the middle of the wind window for you, ready for relaunch. Uh, so that's a very safe system. So whenever you get in, in problems, you just let go the bar, the kite actually stalls, breaks, and comes straight down. Very safe uh, system. And the third line allows you to reverse relaunch the kite. So if the kite ever actually crashes in the middle of the wind window, uh, leading edge down, so nose down basically, again, you just pull the middle line and the kite starts to hover up and relaunch it by itself. And how much do these kites start retailing from? Uh, the Hydra in 3 meter retails for $270 and the uh, 3.5 meter uh, retails for $330. So, Tim, moving on to the Neo kite, can you tell us a little bit how this kite differs from the kite that we just previewed and um, what this kite is best designed for? Well, the Neo actually is a true crossover kite. Uh, basically, looking at the design, it's a, a closed cell uh, foil kite, uh, like the Hydra Trainer, but in this case, it's a, a D power kite. 
So the application for the NEO clearly are water, uh, kiteboarding, uh, uh, landboarding, and also snow kiting. Uh, it's got all the advantages of a foil kite. Um, at the same time, a water relaunches, and uh, the ease of use make it very nice for uh, beginner riders, immediate riders, and even advanced riders to uh, use all sorts of applications with one kite. So one kite does it all, basically. What, uh, what kite sizes does this particular kite come in, and um, can you tell us any other performance characteristics about it when, when you compare it to, say, if I was going to use a 10-meter leading edge inflatable kite, what would I use in this, and what's the power capability of this particular kite like? Uh, the NEO uh, comes in four different sizes. It comes in uh, six square meters, uh, eight, 11, and 14. Uh, basically, uh, the foil is a little bit more uh, performance than any uh, of the tube kites would be. So if you were flying like a 10-meter tube kite on water, at the same time you could fly an 8-meter NEO with the same amount of performance. It's got a lot of D-power uh, for a foil kite. Uh, so it's, not, it's not very safe to fly the kite. Um, so therefore, uh, again, you're more efficient with the foil and uh, you fly, fly an 8-meter while tube kites actually have to run a 10-meter. If there is one, uh, one thing or a few points that you wanted to maybe communicate to people that, that aren't necessarily familiar with the traction type of kites or the foil kites compared to the traditional tube kites, what would that be? Well, basically, uh, what we promote is uh, the, the crossover sports become more and more popular. People are are moving over to landboarding. They do kiteboarding in summer, landboarding in winter, and snow cutting in winter too. So this kite does it all. So uh, by, by using a foil like this, which has the ease of self-landing and self-starting with no help are needed, um, we promote the kite and trying, hey, if you want to do several applications with one kite, that's the ticket. There's no second kite needed. There's no, no pumping up needed. There's no help needed to start the kite, no help to land the kite. Everything is a one-man show. And actually, at the same time, it packs up very small. So if you want to travel, you know, you're summer cutter, you live whatever in Florida, you want to do some snow cutting, well, fly out to uh, Colorado or whatever. The kite packs up very slow. There's no extra baggage need to be paid. Uh, it's a very uh, nice little package. So the third kite um, in, the, in the HQ Power Kites uh, line is the Apex. Can you tell us a little bit about this and how it differs from the other ones? Well, the Apex is a, uh, it's a true snow kite and landboarding kite. It's an open self deep power foil, so it does not relaunch on water. Its applications are snow cutting and landboarding. Uh, the Apex in particular, shown in this banner, is a beginner slash cruiser deep power kite. So people that just want to cruise the back country, people that are beginners, intermediate riders who just want to seek and ride along, uh, have a perfect choice with the Apex. Its characteristics clearly are stability, uh, a lot of deep power and, and just very user friendliness and rock solid uh, kite. So uh, this is the Apex 2, uh, which is after two years of, of riding with the Apex 1, the new updated model. And uh, the improvements over the uh, model number one uh, is a lot more deep power, uh, a, a lot faster turning kite, and uh, a lot faster flying kite as well. So can you tell us a little bit more about the sizes that this comes in? And is the bar the same as... Uh, as the NEO kite? Yeah, well the bar system is the same as we uh, showed earlier on the NEO. Got that very same system. Uh, the Apex comes in sizes of 5, uh, 7 and a half, and uh, 10 meters. So it, it covers the main wind range for those uh, applications of snowboarding and land cutting. So Tim, the last kite that we're going to be covering in the HQ um, kite range for 2009 is the Montana. Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, what this kite is particularly, uh, what kind of rider is geared toward? Okay. Well, the Montana, now in its uh, fourth generation, uh, has been designed by Tom Bordeaux. Um, and it, it, it's, got a, it's a three-line design with a Y-shaped uh, front line. And the Montana, uh, opposed to the Apex, is a, is a freestyle kite. It's a freestyle deep power kite. It has a lot of deep power and extremely quick uh, turning speed and a lot of lift and pop. So riders that want to cruise the backcountry and beginner riders vote for the Apex. Riders that have experience and want to just do freestyle jumping, whatever, uh, they want to actually go with the Montana kite that features all these uh, type of characteristics, basically. It uh, does come with the same uh, bar system as the Apex and the Neo, too. And what sizes does this particular, does the Montana come in? Uh, the Montana comes in 7, uh, 9.5, and 12.5 square meters. So, Tim, we're now looking at the uh, control bar for the 
uh, depowerable bar. Can you explain a little bit how this works and the safety features on it? Yeah. Well, for the uh, for depower foils, uh, they all follow like a regular recon system. So to start the foil, it, it's sitting on the ground. To start the foil, you're going to pull the two front lines, and the kite actually starts to rise up, and the wind window uh, self-inflates and flies to the 12 o'clock position. Uh, this is all achieved by just pulling on the two front lines of the kite. Now, um, you've got the two brake lines of the kite, uh, which is needed to, uh, to brake the kite, meaning you want to bring it back down to earth. You just pull the brake, and the entire kite stalls and comes straight down back to earth. Uh, again, there's no helper needed. You can do everything by yourself by just pulling on the brake. Uh, the brake is also used to relaunch the kite if it landed uh, leading edge down. So the kite's on the ground, leading edge down. You want to restart that? Very easy. Step back, pull the brake. The kite starts to hover up. You're going to twist the bar a little bit. The kite flips around and restarts. As far as safety systems is concerned, there's two uh, systems basically included. Uh, one is you're going to pull that quick release trigger. You pull it here. This pin actually gets all the quick release. And what it does is it extends the front lines all the way, which means is the kite only flies on the back lines. So it backs up completely. And again, it comes straight back down to earth uh, with no pull left. So that's one thing. And the other is this third line that goes through the bar, which actually is, uh, is ends you in this little ring. Now, you could put your suicide leash right here above that ring when you want to fly unhooked. So if you ever lose the bar, basically this, this uh, suicide leash kicks in, pulls right here, and again, it triggers that quick release through that third line. Other than that, you've you got your regular chicken loop. The chicken loop opens up as well if you ever need to get off the chicken loop completely. You just pull here. Chicken loop opens up, and you're completely free from the kites. Uh, the bar's got a, uh, a deep power clam cleat where you basically uh, you can deep power and power your cut up uh, in flight. And uh, via this little strap here, actually, the clam cleat can be reached right at the bar. So even short riders have a very nice and easy access to the deep power strap. What's a typical wind range that you can get out of each kite size? Well, if you, if you look, I mean, it depends on the application. If you look at water kiting, kiteboarding, uh, you can ride a 14-meter neo, probably like in 10, 11 knots. You'll be out there and riding. Um, apparently, the heavier the rider, the, the, the more wind you need. Um, if you do any land application, uh, land boarding or snow kiting or even bugging, you could go out with like, a, uh, like an 8 or 11-meter neo in uh, 6 knots. So quite light winds. And how about the re-ride capability of this? Once you engage... Uh, say the chicken loop safety system, can you put it back together or is your session basically over? No, no, the session is not over at all. Basically, if you ever pull that quick release trigger, what it does is it flips out here and the front lines extend all the way. Now, to rewrite this, all you need to do is, it's a little hard to show you because it's fixed. On each of the two leader lines, there's one of those little loops. You're going to pull both of those loops all the way over to the back end of the, uh, of the bar. And that allows you to actually reconnect that center line back to the quick release trigger. So if you have done it a few times, it probably takes you like 15 seconds to do that. So very easy rewrite system. So good old German engineering then, huh? <laughs> if you will so, yes.